of uh, teams like in the pro leagues were playing uh, submitting Jameer Rogues. It was like a, it's like as if they felt it was time for Jameer Rogues to come back. Oh, I am watching the wrong stream. There we go. I'm amazed to see how many uh, Demir Rogue there are uh, in this tournament. I am not uh, surprised at all um, by how many um, different forms of uh, Jund, uh, not Jund, uh, Naya decks there are. I guess Naya is like the Jund of standard for this current format. So is it Jun style, style of deck. Looks like this is it. Hmm. This is nice. It's playing um it's playing snow covered um basics so that it can play frostbite. That's cool. That's actually really cool. Double crab and a land, milling him for six lands, and in response, he kills it with frostbite. I guess he kind of has to, right? That's crazy. So does he try and make scavenging ooze bigger here? Or does he uh, simply play out a bone crusher? Put more pressure on the board. So he's attacking his grave. There's no creatures in there. Or did he get all the creatures? I think he got all the creatures. Yeah. So he made scavenging who's bigger and he's putting a lot of pressure, getting some life. Just continues to mill his opponent. As you go into the story and try and find answers, I guess he's got to. He's already played all his... No, he can play a land and... No, he can't. No, he already played his lands for turn. It's too bad he could have held up Heartless Act. Which, as I said before, has been voided out. Makes it a dead card because of the counters. Does he block here? I guess he kind of has to, eh? He's got no creatures in his grave. For scavenging used to eat up. <coughs> oh, he did. Hardless Act does not work, my friend, against creatures with counters. So he's going to remove the counters. So he can remove three counters, which would make it a 3-3 three, three again. Nope, 2-2. Two, two. Because he can remove all three of them. Ooh. And then he could effectively trade for the news. Does he really want to do that? Team. Very profitable. Oh, yeah, that, that bone crusher stomp into the stomp on uh, Luris just ended game one. So game one is going to go to Demir Rogues. Good for them. Oh, uh, no, adventures. Say. I think I'm going to brew myself a coffee while they're sideboarding.
We set ourselves up a table just over there. Great. It's within arm's reach. We can get up, make coffee. We set up all our food. Ymir Rose has a lot of decisions to make in this kind of a matchup. I can't believe how many Jimmy Rogues there is. And they're doing well. We're all suited up. Players have chosen their hand. Ooh, Chain, chain Web is such a good card against Amir Rose. And the Ox putting it back just means it's going to get milled. Smart. Historic for the second one, please. Yeah. I think yours is going to be historic for sure. The turn one crab here is always a tough thing to beat. Turn two crab and a land. Mill you for six cards. Man, I love this deck. When Rogues goes off, it's like watching pure magic. I love this. Rogues goes rogue? Yeah. El <laughs> Green goes one another code right yeah but you can only use one oh. on arena so like i don't mind sending him a pack you know what i mean i really like the position here for the jameer rogues deck oh a fable passage mill 12 cards boys take that Ugh, I'm telling you, this deck is just so much fun to watch. I love Rogues. I played it a lot when it first came out. And then people figured out how to beat it, and it just wasn't worth it. Oh, yeah. Hitting the Stone Coil uh, Snake and taking off two counters basically kills it. Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, did you hear that? That was my coffee. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Just can't get enough coffee. And I can't believe we're in round four already. He's flying today. He's just gonna... Yeah, there's no point in blocking the one, two. Um... By blocking, he's simply putting one of his crabs at risk. He's gonna go with another crab. I think that's what I call. I would wait for a land. I would wait for a land. I wish I knew what that card was. Let's see if we can figure it out. I wonder if that card in his... No, it's four mana. Not trying to walk into the story, Heartless Act. Didn't say please. Painful Stroll, Cast and Scatter. Oh, it was a sideboard card. Right, right, James, right. Rippling Fear. All right, we're going to bring this card up. Great. 
Crippling Fear. Choose a creature type. Creatures uh, that aren't of the chosen type get minus three until end of turn. So, uh, pretty much, uh, it can name a creature type of its own. And then everything else on the board gets minus three, minus three. That's pretty good. Does he play it out here? Oh, ho, ho, ho. So he chooses crab, whatever crab is. And wipes the board. What kind of creature is the crab? Crab is a crab. Well, that makes it easy. Thought I had like a subtext or something. Well, the uh, Love Struck Beast is not, doesn't, it's not there to block anything, but I'm telling you, these crabs are going to end the game. That is nine cards a turn. That is 18 cards just from the Fable Passage, and there goes game two. So, Demir Rogues ties it all up. That one game apiece going into game three. Crazy. Yeah. Against what? Uh, Brutal Adventures. I'm telling you that the crab, if you can go a turn one crab and continue to support it and protect it, the card just finishes the game for you. It decks your opponent. Which is crazy. It's crazy. Sakalaki. Both players have uh, decided on the hands that they want. Start a new contest? Oh yeah. Exclamation point BO3. And this turn, this uh, round uh, is for... Ooh, I like that avatar. Oh, that is cool. I haven't seen that before. Uh, it's for a Kelheim pack. Promo pack. What was the what was the uh, set that came out that had all the thopters and stuff? Mm. Galadash? Yeah. That's what that reminds me of. For sure. For sure. Oh, so. <laughs> uh, playing the Gilded Guild Thief um, is a good play here. It mills your opponent. A couple of cards. Uh, it's got flash, so it's on end step or in response to other things. And there's clearly no red mana, but he didn't see that coming. Tell you. That was pretty good. figure out what that was. So it looks like it was Brazen Brawl. Choose the target creature you control and target creature you don't control. If the creature you control three or more snow permanents, that creature you control gets plus one plus zero and gains indestructible until end of turn. And those creatures fight each other. Wow. Brawl. Let's see if we can bring that card up. Do you believe a friend of ours is going to be streaming his wedding? Streaming his wedding, really? Wow. I did not know that. And very cool. I think you mentioned that to me the other day.
Yeah, they'll be streamed on Facebook. With COVID, it's really changed the way we pretty much do everything. Now that it's getting warmer in here, I got my uh, Witch Tower t-shirt going. These uh, chain web spiders aren't doing enough, I don't think. Playing an awakening as a land because he's pretty much milling out his opponent, or at least that's the game plan at the moment. He's holding off a heartless act and an end to the story. Ooh, he's also got that uh, crippling fear. Crippling fear card in his hand, which he could use to clear out those snakes, those snakes, those spiders. Yeah, I would hold up into the story until the end step. For sure. Oh, show. Although a four mana stone coil serpent could cause some serious problems for this deck. Can't stop it from resolving, which is too bad. And you can heartless act it, bringing it down to uh, one, which is not bad. And then he could use crippling fear to pretty much wipe out the entire side of the board. Oh, he's definitely on the mill plan. And he's gonna use guild enforcer to uh, block the stone cold serpent but it looks like he has a stomp and a frostbite which is going to take care of two of the creatures it's interesting that he went for the crab uh yeah he's definitely going to trade with that for sure i would too even though it's got trample, they're still trading. And now the Gruel Adventures deck has no cards in hand. Which gives the Rogues deck the window of opportunity to take over the game. I want to click on the thopter and I can't. <laughs> Just to see what he does? Yeah. Pretty funny. <laughs> oh, he milled an ox into his grave. That's very good. If he can find another land, that ox is going to prove very, very, very important in these next few turns. I want to check out this horn beetle. So at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control another creature with power four or greater, put a plus one plus one counter on yes, Nessa, and horn beetle. So it can get bigger if your creatures, if you have a good size board. That's pretty cool. Very cool, very cool. So here, by playing Lurus, uh, I know you can only play one card out of your grave, but I mean like all the cards in a Lurus, uh, in a Demir Rogue's Graveyard are pretty, pretty powerful cards, man. Yeah, that would be cool if you could touch the uh, Thopter eh? to see what it does. Mm -hmm. Shatter Skull Smashing. I'm surprised that he's playing it as uh, a spell. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. I mean, I understand that he's taking care of Loras, which could end the game. But, like, if he played it as a land, he could play his Ox and draw more cards. I'm not a big fan of the Ox. Well, the Ox is to play against Demir Rogues because the card gets automatically milled. And you just right. play it and draw three cards. I mean, against rogues, I pretty much just sideboard my whole sideboard in anyway. <laughs> That's what a lot of people do. 
Okay. But like the ox is in the mono red deck too in the sideboard, and I never bring it in. Granted, I suck. So. I can't believe that he allowed his crab to die. Very interesting. He's gonna use, and the other thing that the ox does is because you have to use so many cards in your graveyard to bring it back, you're pretty much trying to turn off all of the power of the rogues deck by by your opponent building up your graveyard. Right. Nice. I can block the. Thief. It can block the thief. Yeah. Although he found a very quick answer. Good for him. This rogue deck seems to be in very, very good control, even though it only has one removal spell, Heartless Act in hand. Oh, the Thopter gets hurt when the, the guy gets hurt. Uh... <laughs> That's so bad. It gets electrocuted and falls to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> the violence of this game. Can't contain it. There's the Ox coming back again for two red mana. Exiling eight more cards out of its grave. Not enough to turn it off, though. And drawing three more cards. Two more cards. And he drew another Serpent. Oh, he did draw three more cards. Tight. So now he's got a 3-3 three, three Serpent. Mm -hmm. So, he's going to leave the ox alive. And now he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't. I would cycle this too. That's a good card. He's not dead yet, though. Conceded anyway. I guess he just 